we are back in more in order and today i'm gonna give you guys my top 10 tips for brand new players but first what's going on guys cheers okay let's just jump right into tip number one which is if you're a brand new player in the early game you should primarily be training cavalry units and the reason for this is because as you progress through the game you're gonna notice that you're gonna need a lot of resources to upgrade your buildings to train troops to do research at the college and one of the main sources of those resources is going to be gathering them on the map so you can see that you can search for a farmstead a wood yard a stone quarry iron refinery etc cavalry are just straight up the best unit when it comes to gathering the most amount of resources they can carry more than any other troop type but on top of this they also have the benefit of being the fastest moving unit you can see here once again my tier 3 cavalry has 15 movement speed but infantry is only 12 archers are only eight and mages are only seven and so cavalry are going to be able to go to and from those resource points a lot Lot faster and when you're gathering resources time is money but also when we're talking about gathering resources specifically it might not always be the best idea to train your highest tier of cavalry unit available and what do I mean by this well like I said before this is a tier 3 cavalry unit with 15 movement speed and 16 load but if we look at my tier 2 cavalry wait a minute we have 16 movement speed and 18 load now this is interesting and you might think okay well maybe it's faster because it's a lower unit type other games do similar things like that but that's not the case the tier one units are actually slower so wait a minute we actually have a better load and movement speed from tier two than tier three but if we go to tier four we see we have 16 movement speed and 20 load and tier five actually goes down once again to 15 and 16. and so here you can see that the dragon rider units this is going to be your even tiered unit okay so your tier two your tier four your tier six and so on and so forth those are going to be the ones that have the faster movement speed and higher load and so in general it's probably better to focus on the dragon rider units when it comes to gathering now really quick this video is sponsored by the developers of war in order and if you want to try the game for free there's going to be a link in the description below downloading the game with my link does support the channel a ton i've been having a lot of fun with war in order there's so many different game modes the tower defense the roguelike game modes the city building aspect like there's so much to do in war in order and again it's literally free to try right now so consider downloading the game for free today and help out the channel tip number two is going to be found in your college and if you go into your research section here you can see that there are five different branches of research here in war in order in the beginning of the game the most important place to start is the development research this is because everything that you do here is essentially going to speed up the progress that you make throughout the game as you're leveling up your buildings having this architecture building speed enhancement is going to be great having the research enhancement here is going to be great and by focusing on this it's going to make all of your future researches whether you're doing resource or military etc those are all going to be a lot faster they're going to take fewer speed ups and less time to complete and so first you should start with development and then branch out into other things i personally would then go to resources because again this is going to help you progress through the game a bit faster for example how are you going to get all of the resources that you need to level up your castle okay the requirements eventually start to get really expensive as you're pushing those higher castle levels and so the earlier that you focus on the resource research the longer period of time you're going to have the enhanced benefit of for example producing more food faster producing wood faster etc and it's also going to help you with gathering resources out in the world as well and finally i would start to focus on things like military city defense and guardian force i know that this game is a game of war it is literally in the name but you have to sort of prepare your city and prepare your account before you can actually start to effectively wage war otherwise you're just going to burn out too quickly and other players are just going to be much stronger than you for tip number three we're going to come back to your barracks and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of your units and the different troop types and after you've trained up enough cavalry for you to be gathering resources effectively you then want to start deciding do you want to focus on archers or do you want to focus on mages because if you notice the infantry units are going to be in general your more tanky frontline unit they have a small attack range but they typically have a lot of hp and so if the front line is going to be your tanky infantry units who's going to be in the back line well you have two different choices you have archers or you have mages now 
there is a difference here of course the archers have more hp defense and movement speed but the mages have a higher attack power and they attack from a farther range and so mages are sort of the glass cannon they deal maximum dps but they are the most fragile units whereas the archers might be slightly more well-rounded while still dealing nice amounts of damage and so for you as a player you really should decide which of these two do you want to focus on and go all in on that troop type because really you're not going to have a mixture of archers and mages in your back row when you're going to be fighting it just doesn't make sense you sort of want to min max and go all in on one thing and the reason for that is because if you look at some of the artifacts here in the game you want to stack as many benefits for your singular troop type as you can so for example if your army has a mixture of mages and archers and they're using apollo's bow well there's literally no benefit for your mages you have some archer attack here at two stars and so if you actually had a full army of just archers they would all be getting the benefit of this two star upgrade but if you have a mix of mages and archers all of those mages have the opportunity cost of you're not getting the bonus here and this applies to other artifacts as well so here we see same thing at two stars here the Brionic actually gives you mage attack and at three stars it's mage HP and again if you're running some mixture of archers and mages your archers aren't going to be getting any benefit out of this so that's one thing to keep in mind but the other thing is going to be in the form of your blacksmith right the different weapons and armor that you're equipping to your Lord is going to make a big difference on your army performance so for example here the dragon shard staff gives gives you mage attack and this isn't going to do anything for the archers in your army so you'd rather have all mages if you're going to be running this piece of gear same thing with the dragon squirt sword this is all in on archer units and so really you want to min max one or the other and so really the choice is yours you can decide which of these two that you really want to go with that way in the end game you're not spreading yourself out too thin because then you're just going to be underperforming and you might as well have optimized efficiently in the early game so starting early and preparing for that into the end game is going to make a big difference speaking of artifacts and equipment tip number four is going to expand on that a little bit by reminding you that you should be double checking your artifacts and your equipment periodically depending on what exactly you're doing so for example if there is a pve event you may want to come in and switch around your artifacts depending on what exactly you have available to you so one piece that's relatively easy to get your hands on is the boots of speed and this typically wouldn't be something that you would want to have in your artifact array if you're going to war against other players for example but if there is a pve event going on where you're going to be attacking monsters out in the world well the march speed is going to be really nice here and again at level two stars you get monster attack speed three stars is for recruitment but level four stars is for extra stamina recovery so you're going to have more attacks available to you as the stamina is recovering quicker and quicker so again this kind of has a niche role where it's not great for pvp but it is great for pve and you might not realize that you either have it equipped by accident for pvp or you might want to change and actually equip it in your artifact array for pve and the same thing is true for some of your pieces of equipment so for example if we come into the accessories here you'll see that the mercenary badge gives you bonus building speed but the bandit ring gives you more load and so if you're going to be upgrading buildings one of these is obviously a better choice than the other but if you're going to be gathering a lot of resources then you would flip those around and you can go through here and check to see like what pieces would be most effective for what you're currently working on so the bronze bracelet is even better for load bonus the bone necklace is better for gathering speed the steel bracelet has more stamina recovery for attacking monsters and so on and so forth and so making sure that your equipment and your artifacts are aligned with what exactly you are doing is very important moving on to tip number five we're going to come back into our barracks and we're going to look a little bit more closely at the different tiers of unit because it might seem intuitive that you would just build the highest tier of units that you can when it comes to waging war and like we showed with cavalry there actually is a difference in your stats let's say we look at tier 13 infantry versus tier 12 infantry well here we can see that it might not make that much sense to move down a tier at first glance because there's literally just more stats on the higher tier unit which is again very intuitive however you might be actually wrong about that because if you take a look at these skills here the skill for the highest tier infantry says raises hp when you are the defending side and so this skill literally won't do anything unless you are defending and so in that case we can look at the lower tier unit the tier 12 and you can see that this reduces damage from mages and it's like well wait a minute that actually has benefit 
if you're attacking another player with mages so it actually would make more sense on the offensive side to maybe have the orc infantry marshals as opposed to your max royal infantry marshals in this scenario and we can also look for example at let's say archers let's go all the way to the top here tier 13 says you have a 25 percent damage increase against mages that's really good and looking at tier 12 it says damage against infantry units so in this case it's really just going to come down to which units you're going to be facing up against but if we look at the mages the highest tier of mages gives you damage against cavalry and the tier below that says bonus damage to all soldiers during city defense so again here we see a troop that is specialized for city defense and so which of these two troops you should be training really comes down to what exactly you're going to be doing with your account are you going to be on the defending side maybe maybe not who knows but if you're planning an attack well then it would make more sense to bring the unit that has a skill that is actually relevant to being on offense so always pay attention to the skills of the tier of unit that you're training because it might not actually be the best choice for you in that moment tip number six is very important especially for more free to play players and that is that you should have at least one farm account if not more when you're planning a war in order and what do i mean by this well a farm account is essentially another city that you develop somewhat that has a primary purpose of gathering resources and collecting as many resources as possible and then your main account will then go in and attack that farm city and loot all those resources for your main the benefits here are obvious you have two accounts that are generating resources as opposed to just your main account that's going to help you progress through the game a lot faster now there's a couple of tips here that i want to give for your farm account first of all before you attack your farm you want to make sure that it doesn't have any troops or the beast inside the city and the way that you can do this is by first of all sending units to gather at nodes but if you notice here when i go to actually gather this node the game will automatically decide how many units I need to gather all of the resources in that node but if my goal is to get as many units out of my city before the attack as possible well then I might as well just send my maximum amount of units that I can to each of these different nodes that way I don't have those troops in my city right and so I can actually send all my units here to this single node and then there won't be anything left in my city and so you should be doing this on your farm accounts before you attack the city but then the question becomes well what about the beast that's in your farm account well in that case you're going to want them to be in an alliance that is close to an alliance castle because in this scenario i can actually click reinforce and here i can choose my beast and i can send all of my units to that alliance castle and then the beast is no longer in my city defending my city walls so regardless you do want to send your beast out of your farm city but do you want to send all your units to the castle or do you want to send some of them off to gather it's really up to you i think sending them out to gather is like two birds one stone they're out of your city and you're gathering with them which is nice but sending them to the castle is a lot easier it's a lot faster and it takes the beast with you which you always should be doing that way your main account isn't taking dead units from attacking your farm city tip number seven has to do with infinite wars this is actually a sort of mini game or game mode that becomes available to you once you hit castle level 15. you'll find the infinite wars in your defense command here it's this big crystal tower you tap on that and you tap infinite wars and this is literally a tower defense mini game that i find super fun honestly unfortunately you can only do it once per day for free but the tip here is that you should be doing this once every day at least for free this is such a good game mode for getting a bunch of things in the shop that you might desperately need so for example there's resources there's recruitment speed ups there's lord xp you have material chests you have beast experience ancient relics titan crystals there's so much stuff here that you're going to want to get your hands on to progress your account and again you can challenge this every day for free and so if you're not doing this every day you're literally leaving these rewards on the table this is free stuff that you could be getting simply by playing the game and playing this mini game and on top of that if you have gems to spare you can come into the combat center and you can get yourself some upgrades so for example reckoning here is going to be great deals tons of damage to monsters within a large range so that damage is going to be crucial for your performance here in infinite wars but again just coming in here and seeing okay is there anything powerful available to me to make my life a little bit easier so i can get more resources from this game mode now i haven't spent a ton of time myself min maxing this game mode and you know trying to figure out what the best strategies are here but 
I did mess around with it a couple of times and I found it super, super fun. So the fact that you can have a good time and get great rewards, it just makes a lot of sense to spend a little bit of time learning more about this game mode. And the best way to do that is through experience and playing it literally every day. Tip number eight is going to come in the form of stamina potions. These are the potions that you can use to attack monsters out in the world. And one of the cool things about stamina potions is that since they're an item in your inventory, you can literally just hoard them and save them for the most beneficial time to use them. And you can get a lot of value out of these stamina potions if you save them all for very specific events that reward PVE performance. So for example, the strongest Lord event comes around and you might want to spend a lot of your potions at that specific moment, defeating monsters monsters out in the world. And if you're able to, I would recommend coming into the merchant ship every time that it refreshes and purchasing some stamina potions. You can buy one of these at a time. Unfortunately, they do cost gems, but if you are a player that can be super active during these PVE events, having these saved up is going to be super beneficial. Tip number nine is probably the most important one in the entire video. And that is that you should be having fun in war in order. And I know that sounds cliche. That sounds a little bit corny, but this is a video game. Okay. And there's a lot of things that you can do in this game. It might get a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're a new player, but the number one most important thing here is that you should be having fun. Okay. Don't treat this like a job. If that's not fun to you but if you are a super hardcore player and you like to min max things then play the game however you want if you like to be super invested in min max and always be online and all that stuff if that's what's fun to you then do it but don't stress yourself out trying to be like the best player in the game at all times always constantly doing the most optimal thing and sacrificing other aspects of your real life just to play war and order again it shouldn't be stressful it shouldn't be feeling like a chore or a job the game should be fun to you whatever that means for you join a community join an alliance make friends talk to people and honestly that's probably going to be what is the most fun and rewarding part to you in this game and even in games in this genre right war and order is a city builder war style game and from my experience i've played lots of these games and the best part is the community so don't forget that please make sure you have fun and tip number 10, the final tip is going to come in the form of making purchases in the game. Okay. I saved this one for last because if you're a free to play player, this one won't apply to you at all, but it's important if you are spending in the game to really pay close attention as to what the bundles you're looking at are actually offering, right? Some of these bundles are a little bit more limited time than others because they're going to have better value to you as a player. And so you don't want to be spending. 499 on one bundle when another limited time bundle might come around that is even better for the exact same price right not paying attention to these bundles is what's going to cause you to spend more money than you need to in the game and again you can get nice value from these bundles i've gotten some of these bundles myself and they've really helped out the progress of my account but not all bundles are created equal so for example we have the orange artifact activation bundle this is 1999 and i instantly get my hands on an artifact that i can choose these are the highest tier of artifact these are incredibly useful for your progression on your account so is this a better value or is this a better value this is also a 1999 bundle but it only gives me seven fragments and the same 4,000 gems so literally i mean it depends on which artifact you really want i guess but i think you'd get more value out of a whole additional artifact the same price and the same amount of gems and this theory applies to literally everything in the game you want to go through all the bundles if you're looking for artifacts or recruitment speed ups or whatever it actually is if you care about gems or whatever the case is like make sure that you're getting the best possible value for the money that you're spending if you're impatient if you're too lazy to check that's how you're going to end up spending way more money than you maybe intended to. And so always pay attention to what you're buying. Anyway, guys, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other war and or players might see it while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a war in order video and comment down below your thoughts on these tips. Do you have any additional tips that I missed that lots of players should know about? please put them in the comment section below. I do want to thank war and order once again for sponsoring today's video without generous sponsors like them. I wouldn't be able to do what I do here on YouTube. So if you haven't tried war and order yet, click my link in the description below. It helps out my channel a ton and give war and order a try. There's so many different game modes. There's something here for everybody. And the game is 100% free with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.